Thank you very much, uh, Kathy. Before we get started, I just want to tell everybody a quick story. As many of you know, at the society we have, you could only come to the society as a guest. We have this golden rule one time. Today, Deepak is going to break his own record, and today is the fourth time. And we make an exception for him each time, the amount of people that come out and how great he's with this, uh, at the society. And we were delighted to learn of this incredible book that was coming out and to see his other half, or what some people would say, Deepak, your better half. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we're really delighted to have both of them here. And Deepak and tonight also Sanjiv are going to impress us all with this incredible, fascinating story. And what we're going to do is we're going to do about a 45-minute conversation followed by about 15 minutes of audience questions. And for those people that are standing, there's about 10 seats in the first two rows. So please feel free uh, to come to the first two rows as there are seats in the first two rows because we don't want you to stand. So Deepak and Sanjiv, please tell us, what was it like growing up in India and how did, how did that play into your future but different careers? So growing up in India was uh, <clears throat> an absolutely enchanting experience. We had the most loving parents. We had uncles and aunts, uh, amazing grandparents, and each one of them was an amazing storyteller. So growing up, we part participated in all the ancient rituals where every few weeks an uncle would arrive, uh, an aunt would come and stay with us for several months. Our grandmother lived with us for many, many years. And hearing stories from them was absolutely intoxicating. It was such a vibrant, colorful experience. I can't ever forget it. And Deepak, what role did growing up in India play on your future career? Well, as Sanjeev said, we grew up um, with stories. Uh, our mother told us stories, uh, mostly from spiritual literature, from the mytholo mythological literature. And uh, it was many, many years later, I realized that everyone's life here is a story. You know, There's a story about the Buddha standing on the streets of Banaras 2,500 years ago, and there's a lot of uh, traffic on the street. India was crowded even 2,500 years ago. <laughs> and um, they're waiting for the camels and the bullock carts to um, you know, clear the traffic. And uh, Ananda asks Buddha, he says, uh, uh, explain life to me. And yeah. Buddha points to the wheel of a chariot that's passing by at that moment. And the wheel has three divisions. He says, life is like that wheel. And the wheel is karma, memory, and desire. And uh, this is what we experience as our thoughts. We tell ourselves stories. We live the story, and we call it life. So we were fortunate, as Sanjeev said, to live in a household of stories. And then we became doctors, and we realized that every person that comes to see us comes, us, comes to see us because they have a story. And, uh, you know, that was the tradition we grew up with. We heard stories from our families, but also from our parents, and also from my father about his um, experiences with his patients who were his best teachers. And we learned later that was the same for us as well. There's three more se Yes, want to pass along the microphone. I know some people are having difficult, so you'll be able to hear with, through the microphone. There's three more seats up front here for anybody that's standing, and I think there's some more seats in the back there. And, and, and you know, all the stories had a, a lesson. And uh, what that instilled in Deepak and me were the core values of growing up in India, the principles that we now espouse and that we've hopefully passed on to our own kids and now to our grandchildren. And your father was this incredible individual, one of the most famous doctors in India. What, what do you think he provided you for both of your future journeys? <laughs> well, I have a chapter in the book. It's called Blind for a Day. And I, it's a true story. Deepak and I were studying in St. Columbus High School. We were being taught by Irish Christian brothers. 
I learned Hindi with an Irish accent. <laughs> and after a cricket match, one Sunday around 5 or 6 o'clock, I was reading Reader's Digest, and I fall asleep. Take a short nap, and I wake up 45 minutes later, and I'm blind. I cannot see. And I nudge Deepak, and he's next to me. I said, Deepak, I can't see. So I'm told he waved his hands in front of me, threatened me as though he was going to poke my eye, and I didn't blink. So then he knew for sure that I was blind. And he started crying. He said, I have one brother, and he's gone blind. <laughs> and, and we were staying with S our... Suddenly. Suddenly. <laughs> without warning, without forewarning him. And we were staying with our father's younger brother, Ratan Chacha, and his wife, Karna Aunty. And uh, he took us uh, to the military hospital, where I was examined by doctors, including ophthalmologists. And they had no inkling of what was going on. They even were using the term hysterical blindness. I was this 12-year-old kid who was a great athlete, a good student, and there was no reason for me to fake it. So finally, they got a hold of my uh, father, who was 300 miles away in a military jeep on a field trip. And this is, this is the art of medicine. You always start with history taking. He said, tell me everything that's happened to Sanjeev in the last two months. Oh, he's been fine. He's been perfectly healthy. No, tell me everything. Did he have any injuries, any new medicines? And sure enough, I'd had a laceration from a cricket wicket and a week earlier, and I'd received stitches. So he probed further. Any antibiotics? Did he get a tetanus shot? And they said, we look. And the answer was, yes, he got antibiotics. And he got a tetanus shot. And he said, what kind of tetanus shot? So this is 1961. Anti-tetanus toxoid, ATT, or anti-tetanus serum? And the answer was anti-tetanus serum. And our father, who was a cardiologist, so a specialist in heart disease, but absolutely brilliant and knew everything in medicine, said to the doctors there, he's having a rare idiosyncratic reaction to the anti-tetanus serum. He has severe retrobulbar optic neuritis, started intravenous, and give him massive doses of prednisone, corticosteroids. So they did that. And after four or six hours, I could start saying gray, and then I could finally see Deepak. <laughs> and uh, it was an amazing experience. And that's when I decided to become a father, uh, become a doctor like our father. And I've told this story to professors of ophthalmology at Harvard Medical School at the world famous Mass Ironier Infirmary Institute. And they're absolutely bedazzled. They said, oh my god, unbelievable. 1961, such a rare reaction. So here's another story. And this is uh, when he was in England, my father. And so was my mother. And we were staying with our uh, uncles. I was six. And so Sanji was maybe close to four, four. three and a half. And uh, <clears throat> my father uh, was in Edinburgh, and he passed his uh, exams. He became a member of the Royal College of Physicians. And those days, no email. Uh, letters took two weeks. But we got a telegram from England that he had passed his exams. And so my grandfather, his father, took us both out that evening to see a movie. I still remember the movie. I don't know if you do. Alibaba and the 40 Thieves. <laughs> Alibaba and the 40 Thieves. And then uh, we went uh, to a carnival, and he took us out for dinner. And then in the middle of the night, uh, we were woken up to the wailing of women crying. Uh, my grandfather had died of a heart attack that evening. So um, the next day, they took him to the cremation grounds. And he was cremated. We didn't go because we were very little. And uh, the same uncle that he's talking about, you know, Ratan Chacha, he used to always make interesting remarks. And he said, uh, what is a man? What is a human being? One day, he's taking the children out to see a movie and a carnival. And the next day, he comes back. There's a bunch of ashes in a bowl of glass. I remember that comment. And uh, I, you know, for a six-year-old to see someone, and then they've disappeared completely. 